hello welcome back uh, to my uh, video lectures in this lecture we will be discussing this topic clock gating in clock gating by listening the uh, heading you might have understood clock is gated that means whenever wherever clock is required that will be sent if it is not required it will be blocked that is what is called as clock gating basically let us first know why clock gating clock gating is to reduce the power consumption how clock as shown in this figure clock will be like this continuously it will be on off on off on off on the highest number of transitions that can take place in a circuit is because of the clock so here the first point is stating 50% of the dynamic power originates from the clock related circuits 50% of this dynamic power consumption all the chips together uh, if they are involving in dynamic power dissipation 50% of the power is because of the clock large portion of the signal transitions are unnecessary because of the uh, see whenever uh, a circuit is working in synchronous mode all the blocks must get clocked irrespective of their functionality so a wise decision like if some blocks of the system are in ideal condition just cut off the clock to the circuit save the power like this uh, you can cut off or pass the clock whenever required only to the functional blocks where the blocks which are functioning will only get the clock there will reduce a lot of amount of power clock gating involves dynamically preventing the clock from propagating to some portions of the of the clock path under the certain conditions computed by the additional circuits so there are some additional circuits will be there which will compute whether the clock has to be sent or stop now this clock when gated it will not be functional when it is not gated that is clock is in running mode it will be running like this some blocks will get the power whenever the block needs to function it will get the clock when the function is done it will stop the clock wherever the clock pre is present clock uh, is uh, changing then dynamic power consumption is taking place whenever it is gated dynamic power is not there ideal condition dynamic power consumption is not there like this it will be happening of course the leakage power which is static power consumption will be there throughout the operation when gated only leakage power dissipation takes place dynamic power dissipation reduces because of this clock gating due to the re reduction of the switched capacitances in the clock network that means the switching activity uh, in the logic block fed by the gated clock storage elements clock gating circuits there are different kinds of circuits that will help you to implement clock gating this if you write clk that you should understand go global clock because clock the original clock will be supplied will be connected to all the blocks of the system that is called as global clock c uh, clk g is clock gated that means gated clock gated clock means of coming out of a gating circuit clock coming out of a gating circuit a combinational circuit is used to detect the condition when the specified function is uh, fun specific functional unit is in use so a separate circuit is used when the unit is when a particular block of your chip is functional if it is functional clock will be supplied otherwise clock will be cut off depending upon the functionality an enable signal will be generated that will be supplied to the clock gating network 
this clock getting network will be getting the clock directly. Now, if this unit uh, enable signal is high, then only this clock is supplied to the next block. If this is low, then this clock will be blocked here itself. It cannot pass to this functional block. Now, this is clock gating function. Depending upon the clock gating function, the enable signal will be generated. Whenever enable is high, clock will be coming. See in this example, implementation to release the clock gating function. If we are using a simple AND gate, one input is given to uh, one input will be cl your clock, another input will be your another input will be your enable signal. When enable is high, whatever you the transitions that are taking place on the other line will be generated here. So when the enable is high, enable is high, whatever that took that uh, that uh, is changing will be changing in the output. But here the problem is, for example, if the enable signal is toggling uh, within a clock, it is toggling for two three times, whereas it should be at the low that is enable should be low but unexpectedly two times it went high that will be replicating in the output that is the problem with this uh, and gate logic now if the clock gate function does not stabilize to zero level uh, before the clock rises to high level a glitch is generated by clock function clock getting function which is propagating through the AND gate. So this is the problem with this AND gate implementation. Consider an R gate implementation where enable is complemented and given to the uh, R gate. Uh, here the concept is uh, whenever R gate enable is high, R gate will be getting 0. 0 plus anything is anything. 0 plus x is x. So that is the concept here. 0 plus x will be x. If it is made if it is made high, if it is made low, that will be becoming one. One plus anything will be one. So output clock uh, gated clock will not be functional. So this is the problem with this input. If the clock gating function does not stabilize to one level before the clock falls to low level, the glitch is generated. How glitch is generated? If it does not stabilize, it will be continuing in one. That is the problem with the R gate stabilization. To overcome this AND logic and R logic, what we can do is we can use a level sensitive, a level sensitive uh, active low latches. These level sensitive active low latches will not toggle very quickly because these are level sensitive uh, clocks which are supplied by the clock and the parallel is the same is supplied to the um, AND gate logic and the R gate logic circuits. That means unnecessary transitions will not be passing through these latches. So only stable uh, transitions will be passing. After understanding what is clock gating, how it can be implemented using the combinational logics and all, we can now jump into uh, the discussion of clock gating granularity. Granularity uh, tells you the size of the grain. That means if it is a stone, it will be of larger size. If it is uh, a little uh, pebble, it will be of little size. If it is sand, it will be like sizes are different. Sand, particle of a sand is very tiny, particle of a stone is very large. So that is how. Clock gating can be implemented in three different levels. One is larger level module level uh, clock gating, register level clock gating, second level, cell level clock gating. These are the three different kinds of clock gating that can be implemented in your VLSA chips. Let us now first understand what is module level clock gating. Shutting of the entire block or shutting of the entire module in the design leading to a large power saving. because. A complete block, for example, if a data transfer operation is taking place, which involves DMA. So now uh, you will be uh, giving uh, the uh, clock to the block like ALU, uh, which is uh, uh, computing the next address location, which does not uh, 
take uh, intervention of the processor DMA. Only DMA clock uh, block uh, will be getting the clock and other blocks are cut off. Now, now imagine how much amount of power will be saving. Something like that. A module, a complete module will be cut off when it is not functional. Example, transmitter, receiver, analog to digital converter, mp3 player, etc. Whichever is not in use for some time, that, uh, can, that need not to be supplied with a clock. Shutting off the entire block or module in the design leading to large power savings. The transmitter can be turned off when the receiver is in use. Simple logic. To be identified by the designer and incorporated in the register transfer logic languages. So this is how clock granularity at module level can be implemented. Advantages can provide large saving in the power. Example is uh, this instruction register, de uh, decoding logic, all are uh, together producing the enable signal. If this enable, this is uh, level sense to latch. Whenever this uh, enable signal is high, then obviously uh, this gate has to be high. Uh, how much time this uh, output uh, has to be high? How m the time during it is getting clock. So, whatever the clock that you are supplying will be supplied to this AND gate will be supplied to this AND gate uh, during the time that enable signal is high. Now, now, whenever you make this enable signal zero, clock will stop and this block will not be functional. This is how clock gating at module level can be done. Register level clock gating is shown in this diagram. Here you are using enable signal, you are giving, supplying this enable signal to a multiplexer. Multiplexer is the one which will uh, give n inputs, uh, one output from n inputs. So, this is a two input uh, multiplexer. At any point of time, any one of two inputs will be at uh, its output. Now, this dn is connected to one input and it is seen that whenever you require dn to pass, this uh, enable should be high. If this enable is zero, if this enable is zero, what will be happening? This uh, output is coming uh, continuously. So this is register bank. This register bank, whichever the register needs to have clock, that will be supplied using the gate clock or D F flops and receive uh, re uh, recirculating multiplexer. This register bank is uh, clocked in every cycle irrespective of whether a new value of d is loaded into it or not. So, this register level clock gating will uh, enable us to have a lot, lot of power saving by just uh, turning on the register banks which are inactive whenever it is required. Lot of power saving with this clock gating, lot of power saving due to the elimination of multiplexers reduce the switching activity. These are the advantages and disadvantages is not cost effective for single bit register, less power is reduced. So power consumption power consumption reduction is not much high and it is not cost effective because levels in fixed slots and all larger circuitry is involved in. The advantage is many blocks can be made shut off. Now cell level gating. The cell level gating is uh, example a register bank can be designed such a such that it receives clock only when new data need to be loaded. Understood? If the same data is coming, it, it will not be turned on. The advantage is design is simple, but the limitations are not efficient in terms of area and power. Uh, all registers are to be pre-designed with the inbuilt uh, clock gating feature. It does not allow sharing of uh, clock gating logic with the many registers. So these are the problems with the cell level gating. Uh, during the design itself, the system has to be developed. 
that is the problem with uh, the cell level fragmenting the overall challenges that is uh, that are faced by the vlsa world by clock gating are these are the problems these are the five problems clock latency latency means lacking that is slow clock because of clock gating if the gating network is not much faster that will produce a latency that is clock gating latency effect of clock skew skew means if the clock rate is 10 megahertz 20 megahertz not an issue because the signal transition uh, will have some time whereas if a 3 gigahertz clock is used example our laptops and mobiles latest mobiles have 3 gigahertz clock in such cases clock gating becomes challenging because the gating network must be that much fast it will not allow any skew then it will be very good uh, clock tree synthesis is also a limitation clock tree means the uh, global clock will be coming that global clock has to be distributed to all the branches like uh, all the sub blocks of the system uh, so when you are using clock gating it needs to be supplied to all the uh, blocks of the system at different uh, and basing on different conditions that will be a tough task uh, physical clock gating if you want to implement that is also becoming a challenging task uh, and testability is also a tough task these are the challenges of uh, clock gating i hope you understood uh, if you have any doubts you can leave a comment thank you